So this video we're going to show how to get started with the project and how to get your data set. So we have found a nice database for you to use and there's a link right there in the instructions for project unit one. So go ahead and start by clicking on that. <coughs> and this is the ICPSR database. And uh, if you try to go ahead and download data, it's going to ask you to create an account. So that's probably the first thing you want to do is go ahead and create an account. Click on Login, Create Account there. Uh, I've already created an account, so that's my login information. Um, but your new user, you can go ahead and hit Create Account. And then fill in the information. Uh, we are not an ICPSR member institution, but that will not affect this, uh, this process. Uh, you will not receive a bunch of email or spam from this site. I've, I've done this and it's I've only gotten the one uh, verification email. So you complete this form and then it should send you an email or just create the account and at that point you can go and log in with your email and password. Alright, now we have our account. We're logged in. We're going to select our data set. So there's a ton of data here, right? 10,000 studies. I uh, encourage you to search for something that is interesting to you. Um, if you are looking for the easiest thing to do, uh, you probably want to get the most downloaded data sets um, because people have been using these. They tend to be very robust and uh, easy to get to things. Uh, but if none of these interest you, I encourage you to do a little bit of poking around and find one that does. So it should process should be similar to what I'm doing. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pick number two, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. So you get to the uh, the page for this study and it tells you all the information about it, you know, when it was published, who published it, um, things like that. Uh, then you want to read the, the project description. Uh, there's a lot of questions that are asked for the first part of the project, and a lot of those can be answered by reading through this. It talks about uh, the population, the sample, the sampling method, things like that. So make sure you read through. I know there's a lot to read, but go ahead and read through that. And then you click on Data and Documentation. Takes a little while to load. So there's a lot of data, and here we have the data kind of broken down for a lot of different uh, studies, They're focusing on things like body measurements or blood pressure, etc. So uh, you know now scroll through these and uh, get something more specific to what you're interested in, um, be it nutrition or maybe uh, allergies or maybe. Um, Uh, let's see, alcohol use, um, depression, dermatology, things. Um, again, if you're not interested in any of this medical stuff, um, maybe you want to find a different study. I'm going to select blood pressure because that's always of interest to me. Um, and this specific blood pressure one is now going to be off limits for the class since it's the demo one, so you make sure you pick a different one. Then you click on the button under the download column to download that data set. And you get a couple of options and you want to select delimited. If delimited doesn't show and uh, CSV is another one you can pick, if that doesn't show uh, and there's nothing mentioned about uh, spreadsheets or Excel on there, then it might be no good. So uh, just contact me. I can take a double, uh, take a look at it and double check. Um, but it should say delimited because most of these will have that option. So we select delimited. We get a terms of use agreement, right? and then we hit agree and then it should download this. It downloads as a zip file and downloads automatically. Uh, my computer goes to the downloads folder then you want to unzip or open this up. I'm able to just open it up on my computer 
And I'm going to keep going in until I get to the actual data, which is here labeled data.tsv. So there should be a TSV file in there somewhere. And then I want to go ahead and um, I'm going to copy that. And then I'm just going to paste it back here outside of the zip file. Alright, so it's now accessible without being unzipped. And we technically we unzip that one piece. Uh, we're now ready to import it into Excel. Alright, so we've got an Excel workbook here. And uh, at the top we have the toolbar. We're going to go to the data tab. And then we want to get data from text slash CSV. Alright, and this isn't a text file, but it's it's close enough. Alright. So then we go to where that file is located. Again, I did it in downloads. And no items match the search because it's looking for text files, right? And this isn't a text file, it's a, a TSV file. So I just say look for all files, then grab that TSV file, then hit import. And this cool thing comes up saying, hey, you know, this is where it's from. Do you want us to to format this and whatnot? Right, and then just go ahead and say, hey, sure, load it up. Right, and these data sets are very large. <clears throat> uh, this one's uh, almost 10,000 rows. Okay, so now we see a bunch of numbers here. Let's try to make sense of this. Uh, if we go back into the zip file, we see that there is a, uh, a code book. That's a PDF. You should be able to open that up. And the code book should explain what's going on here. Um, so uh, obviously we know this is that uh, NHNES survey, right? Um, and we're looking at the examination of blood pressure, so that matches. And if we get it in there, it should start explaining what the columns in the spreadsheet are one by one. So notice this says SEQN, and that's the first column is with that header, SEQN, and it's basically, that's the number for the people, right? the individuals in the study. So it's anonymous data, you don't actually put out people's names, so they gave everybody a number, and that way they can keep track of you know what demographics people are in and that kind of thing. So, so those numbers just uh, are assigned to all the patients or individuals in the study. Uh, next one, P-E-A-S-C-S-T-1. You can see that matches with the header in column B. And this is your blood pressure status. Right? And it's a value 1, 2, or 3 based on whether the blood pressure has been completed or partial or not done. All right. and, and then it goes on like that. So now you want to look through here and you want to find something that's specifically of interest. Um, we're going to end up wanting to um, isolate one of these for, for this part of the assignment. So going down a little further and uh, you want some you don't want to have one of these it's just one or two right um, or a couple options you want to have one that has a lot of different numbers um, so a, a very almost continuous quantitative um, data set and uh, uh, this is a great example so the actual systolic blood pressure, uh, measured on the people. So that's what I want to try to isolate, the uh, BPXSY1, find out the systolic blood pressure, and you can see that is BPX, oh, so it's a little further over, there it is, so it's in column Q. So column Q is uh, probably the specific data that I'll be looking at. Um, 
let's go ahead and name this uh, tab at the bottom, the uh, source data. Right. And then we'll create another one. Remember the assignment asks you to <clears throat> create separate sheets in the workbook. And so then the next one is going to be uh, about sampling. And you're going to want to go ahead and complete uh, questions that are in part three. So there's there's five things to address there, and you can just type right on here, right? So uh, a sample, and uh, and this says uh, sample size. So sample size. And stop. Uh, and then we'd actually have to go into the data set and figure out the sample size. Um, so some of these things will be determined from the data set, and some of them will be determined from information about the data set. Uh, so things like sample size can be determined from looking at how many numbers there are here. Right, and uh, you know when you select a column, it does actually count um, how many cells there are. Right, so you see uh, the sample size can be determined quickly from that without having to count them. Um, and we said earlier that a lot of the information about sampling and population should come from here. But uh, if you want more, you can maybe look in scope of project. Yeah, so I think the scope of project goes into more about data collection. And the methodology goes more into the design of the study, target populations. sampling and the specific sample and sampling methods. So uh, most of that information should come from the information right on the study page. right? And it's your job to uh, find out the answers to the things addressed in three and then answer those in this separate tab. Right? And then the last thing is to actually create uh, some frequency distributions on the third sheet. Now this is something where there's another video on the site, right? I show how to do this in the frequency distribution and relative frequency distribution videos under unit one videos. Um, we do it here. It's a little bigger than what we did uh, in some of the other assignments. Uh, so first off we'd want to right take uh, this and copy and then paste it in. Okay. And remember the actual, uh, so that PDF for the uh, the code book for systolic blood pressure, it actually has a frequency distribution and relative frequency distribution, but it really doesn't meet the criteria. We wanted to have a grouped frequency distribution. Um, frankly, this is just too long, right? It starts here, and then it's all that, and then all that. And, and there's an advantage to having it sorted out that way. That's going to help you do the grouped version. But remember, with our, our rule of thumb is that we want there to be no more than 20 rows in one of these tables, just because it's too much to digest. So you're going to want to turn this into a grouped distribution. And you know, using these values is actually a good place to start. So um, you can take this and then you can use that to create it. But you can also use uh, the raw data there. So um, you can create your frequency distribution and relative frequency distribution right on this spreadsheet. And then when you're done, you can uh, save it and click here and then upload your spreadsheet. Right? And then, of course, save it because um, we'll be adding on to the spreadsheet throughout the semester. So if you have questions about this assignment, uh, you get stuck with this website, ICPSR, or something else in the process, 
Um, go ahead and post in questions about Unit 1, and uh, we'll try to help each other out.